All right, you ready to say goodbye to more Pine Barrens? All right, no, I'm not, but uh, this whole project here in East Quag has now been approved by the Southampton Town Board. So this whole area here that you see of the Pine Barrens is going to have golf course and luxury housing uh, built here. Uh, and we're going to read the article right now uh, from the Southampton Press. So it says, Southampton Town Planning Board's split vote approves East Quag Golf Resort. And uh, if we do here, you see Newsday also has an article Disputed golf community development poised to become Pine Barrens giant. That's right. This is the way it is here on Long Island. So this is the area that you're going to say goodbye to right here. Uh, uh, see all the pines here. You're going to say all goodbye to all of this right here. This is all going to be gone. Uh, so all of this you can see fenced, fenced off. It's all going to be gone. So let's talk about it. It's all over but the lawsuits. A decades-long, often convoluted, and always controversial process came to an end on December 8th when a majority of the members of the Southampton Town Planning Board gave the green light to the Lewis Road Golf Resort Project by Discovery Land Company. The vote was 4-3, to three, with Vice Chairman Dennis Finnerty and members Craig Camala, Catalano, Thomas Neely, and Thakur George Mutu voting in support of the plan to build a seasonal residential resort plus an array of amenities, including an 18-hole golf course on acreage located in the Pine Barrens in East Quark. Board's chairman, Jackie LaFaro, along with members of Glorian Burke and Kate Fulham, cast no votes. Burke and LaFaro vo both voted against the proposal at the pre-application stage. Fulham was appointed to the board later in the process. Discovery Land Company plans to construct 118 units plus 12 workforce housing units, an 18-hole private golf course, and other private recreational facilities on nearly 608 acres of land, 65% of which would be open space in the Central Pine Barrens Overlay District and Aquifer Protection Overlay District. This is a joke, right? Also proposed are a recreational complex, fitness center, community pool, club pool, clubhouse, plus the golf course, all as on-site amenities for the exclusive use of the site's residents. The project originally debuted in 2013 as the planned development dubbed The Hills. In 2017, the town board voted against the needed zone change, prompting a $100 million lawsuit from Discovery Land. The plan resurfaced, this time called the Lewis Road Planned Residential Development, putting the planning board in charge of the review. In a split vote in 2019, the planning board approved the preliminary subdivision and site plan applications for Lewis Road on land generally located north and east of Lewis Road in the vicinity of Spinney Road and extending north to and beyond Sunrise Highway in Quag. The plan was set to, sent to be reviewed and was ultimately approved in 2021 by the Long Island Pine, Central Pine Barrens Commission. That's right. The organization that's supposed to protect our Pine Barrens, they approved it. All right. Again, they, this never would have happened if we were in New Jersey. All right. The project was not unanimously embraced by commission members, although Southampton Town Supervisor Jay Schneiderman, a commission member, gave his assent. Brookhaven Town Supervisor Ed Romaine dissented, voicing an argu uh, argument repeated by opponents throughout the Lewis Road process that the plan has been revised substantially since it was first pitched for the zone change, and so the developer should undertake a new environmental review rather than rely on one conducted by the town board for the hills. Romaine reiterated his objections last week, on December 7th, when the plan returned to the commission for review. Members voted... The most recent iteration of the plan was consistent with their 2021 approval. Noting that, despite a panoply of objections raised during the Hills review, the project resurfaced. Romain pointed out, promised community benefits required as environmental mitigations methods under PDD, a zoning tool town officials sub subsequently repealed or removed. The Lewis Road proposal now calls for commercial complex larger than just the golf course and maintenance buildings allowed by the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals approvals for accessory buildings are being litigated. The proposed clubhouse contains residential units in violation of the town code, which prohibits housing in accessory structures, Romain wrote in comments shared with the Express News Group. He added, it seems that the Southampton town would like the Pine Barrens Commission to believe that a 100,000 square foot commercial resort complex with commercial dining for 200, a health club, a spa, a 10,000 square foot commercial pro shop bowling alley is simply a residential subdivision with a few amenities. 
Bob DeLuca, president of the group for the East End, was among a cadre of environmentalists and neighbors who have launched legal proceedings looking to annul decisions by town reviewing agencies. One challenges the ZBA decision that a golf course can be seen as an accessory use to a residential development. In an email following the vote, he questions how do we get to a place where the planning board majority thinks an approval for a commercial resort built and operated by a commercial resort developers is somehow legal use for this parcel. Let's see what happens if the, acre, if the average Joe wants to build an accessory restaurant, retail store, or 7-Eleven on their residential property. If an entire resort is a customary accessory, the zoning code isn't worth the paper it's written on, and the staff has played a significant role in accepting this narrative and bullying those planning board members who failed to fall in line. DeLuca referred to the first vote cast last Thursday, December 8th. The procedure calls for the board to adopt findings under the State Environmental Quality Review Act to attest to conducting a thorough environmental review of the project. Rather than conduct its own review, the board relied on the environmental review undertaken by the town board for the Hills project. While the Lewis Road application fell under planning board jurisdiction, the town board was still listed as the lead agency. Fulham asked a comment, speaking of our oath in office and the state's constitution provision affirming the public's right to clean water and clean air, she said that from the beginning of her tenure, she has been uncomfortable with the procedure that's been followed. She has also felt the CEQA process wasn't followed correctly and couldn't vote to adopt the findings. I don't think we did it right, she said. Depo Deputy Town Attorney Sc Christine Scalara interrupted her and said that if she had a legal objection, the board should go into executive to se session to discuss it. Fulham's comments could taint the vote, advised Scalara, who voted in favor of the Hills when she was on the town board. The meeting adjourned and an executive session ensued. DeLuca questioned that move. All right, this is a very long article here. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, but, um, you know, you can see here that this is not an acceptable uh, thing. So what's going on here? But again, you know, it gets to the point where I, I maybe I maybe I even have to give up my battle to stop to save the Pine Barrens. It's, it's, it's futile, man. These people have money. They can do whatever they want, uh, and they're going to ruin more Pine Barrens. And, you know, it gets, it gets to the point where, hey, just go live in New Jersey already, where this crap doesn't happen. All right? So, um, yeah, all this, and apparently north of Sunrise, too, so they're going to knock down some stuff north of Sunrise. They own, own some land north of Sunrise as well. So, again, I mean, this, is, this view here along the highway is going to be changed forever. You know, it's a beautiful view here. Pine's here. Pines there, um, you know, this is gonna, this could all be gone. I, I mean, it's just unbelievable that this is allowed to happen. Uh, but it is, and you know, there ain't anything any one of us can do about it. At least I don't, I, you know, I feel pretty powerless about it, you know. Um, and um, it really, you know, it just gets to the point where, hey, you know, um, Long Island doesn't care about protecting its pine barrens. It's pretty obvious. Uh, there's another project that's also going to be taking place as well that I want to talk about, and that is in this area here. So this is a very small area of Pine Barrens. Was, part of it was a former sand mine. Well, you can say goodbye to this, too, uh, because they're going to be building a housing project. will be affordable housing, but you can see here that this is also going to be knocked down as well, and I'll, I'll link some articles to that as well. So um, just another example of what goes on on Long Island as we see the Pine Barrens destroyed, whether it's by the Southern Pine Beetle or whether it's by, by these developers. Uh, you know, this is exactly why uh, if you love the Pine Barrens like I do and seeing, um, you know, what's happening, you know, you best to enjoy the Pine Barrens now while you still can because eventually we will all have to go and go to New Jersey for to see the Pine Barrens because there won't be any, any left on Long Island. Um, so that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you for watching and take care.